What's up YouTube, ODST Gerald back again with another Operation Trebuchet news update video. And I just want to start off by apologizing guys, it's been obviously a couple weeks since my last video. Uh, I was out on vacation. Tried to get uh, one of the week's videos done before I left, but just didn't have time. I started editing and couldn't finish up. So we're just going to go ahead, we're going to include like two weeks worth of content in this video. So it's going to be a little bit longer. Lots of awesome stuff. A very big announcement at the end, which I'll get a little bit more into in a different video. But let's go ahead and hop into it. Starting us off, we have Marstrux Pistol, which we've shown off a couple times previously. Um... Kind of buggy in these, uh, this first image here, but it's pretty much ready to go now. Uh, I don't know if he's made any uh, alterations or anything since I've last seen it about a week, week and a half ago. But it was pretty close to being done at that point, so I'm guessing it probably hasn't changed too much. It seems like it maybe struggles a little bit with armor as far as performance goes, but any unarmored foes, beware. Yeah, and this is supposed to be like a hunting pistol or something. So it's kind of a cool looking weapon, very sci-fi like. Reminds me a little bit of something you might see on like Firefly or Serenity. Very neat, but uh, not much else to say about it. So we're going to go ahead and keep moving on, on over to... Uh, a different weapon by Marshrek. This one is a tool gun or something. I don't know exactly what you'd want to call this, but it's kind of a makeshift weapon uh, made from tools, and it's basically being based off of a weapon from uh, Dead Space as well as uh, just kind of standard modern day tools. Now, there isn't really a whole lot more to say about this, but I've got a little bit of video footage to show and uh, not much to say, so I guess we're just going to kind of keep talking and wasting time for a second so I can actually get this to actually... Um, you know, basically play out the whole way here for you guys because it's a uh, couple minutes worth of video here, so not super duper long, but uh, hopefully that should be good enough or pretty close to good. If not, I'll just have to cut something out. Which then brings us on over to uh, reticules. So we've got some sweet new uh, vehicle reticules here and uh, very much digging these things here. Uh, as far as these reticules go, they are... Uh, for the warthogs, the turrets, all that stuff. Uh, not really much to say about them. I mean, obviously it's just the standard Halo reticule, but it's going to be a very big thing, I think, for a lot of people, especially with the standard warthog. The iron sights have never been super popular, and while they've been much improved from the past, there's always been that room for improvement people have kind of looked for, so I think having these reticules is going to be a very welcome addition. And obviously that translates over to the static turrets that these are going to be placed on as well. So uh, a nice little update, pretty unexpected, but a welcome one to be sure. Uh, that brings us on over to armor, in which case we have uh, Burgess's uh, CGA armor. Uh, we've got the helmet, it appears to be in-game, and assuming that it's in-game, well, not assuming that's in-game, it's in-game, but uh, going off the fact that it's in-game, it's safe to assume uh, that this is pretty much ready to go. I mean, there's obviously all these other armors in-game, so having the, the configs pretty much already done, and the only thing you really have to worry about doing is changing the armor values and stuff and tweaking that as you want. So this should pretty much be ready to go as it is in this video. Uh, with that being said... It's a cool helmet. It's pretty similar to what we've seen coming out of Opcan previously with some minor tweaks and changes. I definitely dig it. Not really much else to say. There's supposed to be you know, a whole other set of body armor and other stuff that we've seen in development. We've shown it off in the past, but it uh, was much less further on. It wasn't textured or anything the last time we saw it. Uh, Burgess has been very quiet development-wise. I mean, he seems to still be working on stuff. I'm not sure how fast he's working on stuff. Uh, or if he's been preoccupied with other stuff, but obviously he is getting work done as you, we can see with this armor So not really sure when we can expect to see the rest of this armor coming along But I suppose when we do see it, I will be talking about it then that brings us over to Buildings sort of or in this case a ship. Uh, we have the Halberd class destroyer This is one of my personal favorite UNSC ship designs despite being so different from like other UNSC ships seen at the time I always dug this thing it's surprisingly much smaller vessel than I realized. Uh, Ethan has been working on this project. Initially, it was designed to be for his uh, clan, and that was going to get integrated into Optre later on. Uh, plans for that have since changed, so basically what the plan for this thing is is that this will be uh, probably at release a static object with an open interior that people will be able to basically put the modular interiors from the Drake class into this thing and design their own ship. And then eventually, as time progresses, this will have its own interior added. So this will actually essentially be um, a replacement for the frigate that we had in the past. So this thing will have 
a, a larger hangar bay will have interior rooms just like the Drake class. Now, I don't know if uh, if he was smart, and what I would probably do just for our, kind of a consistent look is I would just pull any parts that he could use from Dog and use Dog's uh, models and stuff in uh, his quest to design for this. Now, I don't know if that's going to happen or not, but that's what I would personally do. Uh, it's pretty cool looking, though. It should fit, like, two Pelicans in the hangar bay, uh, hopefully it'll have some of the static mounted M910 point defense turrets. So, uh, very cool, very cool craft. It will eventually get released probably as part of the Optrade dev build, but failing that, um, Ethan has said that he plans to release this as a independent, like, side mod, like some of the other Optrade devs like Zephyr and them have done in the past, where this will be, uh, its own mod until it gets integrated into Optrade officially. Uh, regardless, either way, I'm very excited to get my hands on this, even as a static prop piece. This thing is going to be super popular, I'm sure. Uh, but once it actually gets integrated, interiors and everything, oh boy, oh boy, I just that's going to be so fantastic. It's going to be great. Uh, we do actually get a look at one of the interiors here with this as well. We get to see a work in progress of the interior bridge for this thing, so you can see the uh, static hollow table some uh, some pylons going going up, I guess, to the ceiling, presumably. And you get to see a Arma Man in there for scaling. So it's a pretty large bridge, certainly larger than the uh, the Drake class, it seems. Not by much, but by a, a little bit. It's definitely wider. Once again, what I personally hope to see, I would personally like to see the hollow table just removed and just integrate Dog's hollow table and integrate his councils and stuff which haven't actually gotten put in, into the drake class but i would integrate those just to give it a consistent look between the usc ships and have that kind of set design but that's what i would do I, you know whatever ethan wants to do i guess is you know it's his project so i'm definitely looking forward to seeing where he goes with it now staying on the theme of well i would say vehicles that's technically a vehicle it's the static vehicle but we're going to vehicles that's the point uh, we have the new and improved Falcon. So this thing is a slick looking beast. Now this is being developed by Forky. And the reason I put Frosty on there is because it's actually being developed by Frosty. I just wanted to troll him a little bit. Uh, I think this is actually a joint project between a few people though. Because I've seen uh, Jedi Nick was posting some stuff for it. So I don't know if uh, it's a collaboration between a few different people as far as modeling goes. Or if it's just images he was sharing off for some other reason. Uh, this is a slick looking model. I definitely dig this thing. Now, honestly, the Falcon model has never really bothered me. I would have personally preferred to see the Pelican, but obviously Zephyr started working on the Pelican model uh, update, and while we haven't seen anything for that, uh, this thing is still an, a welcome addition. Obviously, there's a couple big things that people have always taken issue with with regards to the Falcon. Uh, the first being... The, the cockpit, at least with some folks. And for me, that's not really bothering me, but I could definitely see where that might bother some other folks. So we actually get a interior view of the uh, the cockpit. And you guys will see that this is obviously not armor. This is a render still within this uh, cockpit view, but you do get a good idea of what you would see as the pilot of this thing. The view is probably a little bit off, but you can see it's a much bigger field of vision uh, than the previous iterations. Uh, with that being said, I think a bigger thing for me, personally, is the fact that this will be armed with uh, the M279 static weapons on the side. So this will be the Huey gunship that I've been waiting for it to be. Uh, obviously, we had, uh, you know, side mods like uh, Fireteam Zulu have added in the static weapons on the side that were basically uh, attached to command on there. But this will actually be fully integrated into this thing, vanilla, ready to go. Very excited about that. That's going to be huge for me. Now, I don't know if we'll get the grenade launcher variant or not. Obviously, with the M279s, they're already static weapons in the mod. So the config and stuff is all done for these. The model looks like it's a new model for it, probably. But, I mean, the model is done, so they could have imported it. I don't know. Um... With the grenade launcher, that's obviously not the case, though. So there's a lot more work to get the grenade launcher done. If they do that, though, that would still be very cool. i definitely dig that. Uh, if not, though, I'm just happy to have the M279. The M279 is probably a little bit more viable or uh, functional as an actual weapon in Arma. So I'm all down for it regardless. Very excited to see this thing actually in action. But we get a textured version of it and everything. So this thing looks like it's actually a lot further on than you would have expected to be, considering it's kind of a... A very recent announcement. Um, what's 
I'm not sure about, though. However, it is just where this sits at as far as configuring and everything goes, because it does appear to be pretty much done as far as uh, textures and, uh, and materials and stuff like that. I don't know where it sits at with the actual config for getting it in-game, however. I would imagine that it's probably not going to be super difficult to config, because typically in the past when uh, the Optrade devs have replaced a... Uh, object that they already have. They'll usually just use the config from the old object and they will maybe update or tweak a few things. Now that should in theory be mostly all they need to do for this. Now I don't know how that will change with these uh, side weapon mounts. That's going to be kind of the big thing. Um, it could actually affect the config quite a bit because obviously had uh, previously the fire from vehicle positions. Now that won't be the case with this. It will have these uh, static weapons on the side, or at least on some variants it will. So I'm not really sure how much that's going to change or slow down the uh, configuring process. Well, actually, that's all we've got for Optrade. Then we go on over to uh, First Contact here. So as far as First Contact goes, a lot of stuff, uh, both static and not, to show off. So as far as that stuff goes, we've got a bunch of Sentinels, which are being worked on by uh, Hollywood here. And these things are much bigger than I initially would have expected. I guess because I'm used to seeing them as a Spartan. They always feel much smaller. Seeing these things stacked up against a normal armor man, they are huge and uh, kind of terrifying. I definitely wouldn't want to have to face one of these on foot, but we're going to have to face a bunch of these on foot eventually. Uh, it's it's a cool Sentinel. There isn't really much to say about the model because, I mean, it's still that's a nice looking model, but it's pretty early on. We still don't know how they're going to fly around, how they're going to move. All that's still up in the air. So a lot of unknowns as far as that goes. Uh, with that being said, let's go ahead and move on over to buildings because obviously we can talk a little bit more about uh, the buildings. We obviously know what they're going to be used for. So we've got the uh, the big ground plates as seen in Halo Wars that uh, Hollywood was also working on. Uh, of course, we have seen some of this already these are just you know continued uh, you know materials updates uh, pattern changes stuff like that uh so kind of basic changes nothing super crazy from what we're seeing here however we do get some scaling stuff with a person and a uh, scorpion tank on there to give you guys a sense of scale and uh, these plates are huge is the sense of scale and then we actually get to see them in game so obviously it's a static building so these are pretty easy to get in game Get to see a scorpion and a person on there on the ground pretty neat not much else to say about that though it looks you know it looks good already i don't know if this is going to necessarily be the final pattern that they're going with or uh if we're going to see some other changes in iterations as they uh, continue to develop these floor plates but we do have some other floor plates that are being developed as well uh so we've got like a corner piece and we've got like kind of like that segment connector and then we have what almost appears to be like a light bridge. I'm not sure if that's what this thing is here or not in the front and center. Uh, it could be a light bridge. It could be something else. But I'm thinking that's what it is. And I know that the light bridges were definitely requested. And I'm assuming that's what it is just given how flat the model is. I can't remember these things from Halo Wars or Halo Wars 2 specifically. But that would be my guess. Then we've got a, a different angle. So yeah, I mean you can see that same piece that was front and center uh, here in the middle. And you've got the... Uh, kind of connecting piece in the center of that. So it does appear to be a uh, light bridge, and then that connector would go between the two light bridges on like a center platform or something, presumably. So uh, definitely very neat. Uh, pretty excited to see this uh, get finalized and see how they handle light bridges. Uh, kind of curious how they want to go about that. Uh, presumably... They'll use these consoles if they can. I don't know how they integrate these, but we have, of course, the uh, hard light constructs, uh, control console, as seen in Halo 1, and you know a bunch of other stuff. Uh, pretty cool console. This obviously is a very early block out, but this thing is actually already complete and in-game, as you can see from these next two pictures, uh, along with another console. So you actually get two different consoles. It looks fantastic. I love both these consoles. Uh, once again, not really sure how they're going to integrate these. I don't know if these are just static prop pieces or if these will have some sort of functionality that you can tie them to the doors and light bridges and stuff. I'm very curious about that. Uh, I don't know if that would be like something that needs to be done through, uh, you know, configuring or how that works, but definitely curious. Uh, sticking on the theme of doors and locking, we have a new static lock door. So obviously we already talked about previously the Forerunner doors can be locked using the init code on there and you can basically 
do triggers and stuff to lock the doors, which is very cool. I definitely dig that, but obviously it's not necessarily the most user-friendly thing for a new user. So they've added a static locked Forerunner door that you can just plop down and it's ready to go locked as is. This is a nice option for a beginner person to Arma so that if they're getting into Eden at first or they're not as experienced, people like myself, we can just plop down this locked door. We don't have to worry about doing, you know, config work or whatever in it codes to lock the doors. I mean, it's not that difficult, but this is, like I said, an easier option when it comes down to it. So that is the uh, last of official news. However, we do have unofficial news. So getting into it, we've got uh, GEK Ventral starting us off, and uh, he's got another new project this week. So busy man, as always. Uh, he is doing the new Mombasa uh, doorways. So these are already actually being worked on by the um, Optrade dev team officially. However, with that being said, uh, you know, this is at the very least good practice for GEK, even if he does not, you know, end up actually releasing these doors or whatever. Uh, it's good practice. I actually kind of like his materials a little bit more. It just seems shinier, but then I think uh, looking at this, that's actually not his door. That's probably the uh, actual, like, base Halo door. <laughs> I think about it that we're seeing in the background. That's not his texture. That's just his reference image. So I sound really silly saying that because it's like, well, yeah, okay. That's why I like it more. It's actually Halo. Uh, looks good though, but not much else to say about that. Then we have Rabid Duck Sauce. And, uh, apparently Rabid Duck Sauce is actually code word for the flood because Rabid Duck Sauce is making the flood. Uh, we've got a infection form starting us off, kind of Halo 3-like. This one very quickly got replaced with a much more detailed model. Very cool looking though. Um, obviously... Not quite as threatening looking as some other Flood, but that's okay because Rabbit Duck Sauce definitely wanted to address that. Uh, before we take a look at those other infection forms, though, we've got a, a Flood Spore. Very basic ball, but uh, textured. Should be quick and easy to get in-game unless they want to do something crazy with the config that spawns like Flood or something absurd like that. Uh, then we've got the updated flood infection form model next to a person so this thing is much more terrifying looking you know it's much more tenderly based off the halo wars 2 designs from it and it is obviously very big compared to a well not big compared to a person but it's very large when put next to a person um it's you know a lot larger than you expect the infection forms to be because the infection forms are actually pretty big i mean especially when you actually see them attached to a person you think about it uh, but as, once again, as the Master Chief, you're not necessarily used to that. They look much smaller because you're taller and, uh, you know, you destroy them so easily. But yeah, these things are going to be super terrifying to face off as, uh, you know, if you're playing as a Marine or ODST or whatever. Um, probably more so than a Sentinel if you get a whole bunch of these, because there's going to be more of these things than Sentinels if you're pushing them um, down in theory. Uh, we do see some other changes to the model tweaks, more tendrils, stuff like that. Nothing super crazy. We don't get to see, unfortunately, any textured variants of this. I don't know if this thing is going over any model changes or not. Uh, but it is a very cool model. I definitely dig this infection form. I definitely improved the fact that they've gone with the, the Halo Wars 2 aesthetic because that's just a good aesthetic for it. Uh, and then that brings us over to some other Flood forms that they're working on. Specifically, up first, we've got the Flood Juggernaut, which is absurdly massive. And that's why it's called the Flood Juggernaut. But uh, it's a cool thing. I mean, I don't know how viable something this large that's supposed to be a person or like a bipedal is going to work in Arma. I don't know if this is something that can be cheesed onto a standard skeleton or Spartan skeleton, or if this would require a upscaled skeleton like the Spartans to an even larger degree. Uh, in theory, that's what you would need to expect is something super large, uh, really upscaled. So this would probably take a lot of work to actually see this in game, but I'm kind of curious about it. I really don't know what to expect. And then we've gotten up close of it and all its little boils and pock marks and stuff like that. And it's uh, pretty gross. And then we've got a Flood Pure form. Uh, very large, once again, compared to a person. This one actually, surprisingly, feels much larger than I remember these things being. It, it, even, even as a Spartan, I feel like this is kind of a little upscaled. Not really sure if that's the case. Um, yeah, I don't really know what else to say. I mean, kind of the same thing as the last one. I don't know how they're going to integrate this with the, uh, the standard skeleton, or if that's even viable at all. 
Uh, of course, melee combat, once again, being the big thing to overcome besides that. Uh, still very neat, very excited to see where this project goes. Even if we only got the infection forms, I'd be very happy with that. But if we could get, like, infection forms that actually turn people into combat forms, oh my god. It's technically, it's possible within the confines of armor to do that. It's not easy, but it's possible. I would love to see that. Uh, that brings us to our final bit of Arma 3 Operation Trebuchet content, and this is a, another side mod from Sriracha. Uh, this one is a gazebo from, I believe, ODST that he's working on. Uh, it sounds like this would probably get donated to the Optray dev team if they'd take it. Looks pretty good. This was actually a project that somebody else had started in the past and it never got finished, so I'm definitely excited to see this thing actually come to fruition if it does. Now, obviously, it's still got a ways to go. I don't know how much more work Sriracha plans I'm putting into this thing, uh, but it still needs texturing and stuff like that, so there's still some things that need to get done. I mean, the implementation of the config and stuff should hopefully go pretty quick because it is a static building. All right, guys, so... That brings us to our last bit of big news. SCE has been uh, officially announced as to what it is. Now, if you don't know what SCE is, that has been a big mystery for a lot of folks on the Optry Discord for a couple of years. Now, I think it's been close to two years since they've been on there. And um, I've actually known for quite some time what it was. I made a video about a year ago talking about what SCE was. And when I approached the Optry dev team to discuss it, uh, I was asked very nicely if I could not talk about it yet just because they were concerned about the, um, the mod actually getting released and didn't want to raise any expectations or anything like that. Uh, yeah, so I mean, it's going to be a kind of a big announcement and I don't want to just tack it on to the end of this video because this video is already kind of longer and I want to just focus more on that project solely. So we're going to do that as a separate video, guys. I don't know exactly when I'll have that done because I haven't recorded it yet. I want to update all the information I have and uh, go from there. So with that being said, guys, uh, keep your eyes peeled. If you're not already, hit that subscribe button so you can get notified when that video does come out. Uh, of course, I will post it automatically over my Discord as well. So if you guys prefer Discord, you can hop on over to my Discord to see that release over there. Uh, other than that, like always, guys, I want to know what you were most excited about from this week's video. What assets on today's video did you guys enjoy the most? What do you want to see the most in future content updates for Operation Trebuchet? Let me know in the comments below, guys, and uh, I'll see you in the next one. Take it easy.